Hello guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett here, The Study Doc, and today I'm answering one of your questions. If you are a student and you want coaching from me, you want me to answer your question, get to my website, thestudydoc.com, click on the little button that says leave Dr. Pinesett a voicemail, and I will feature you just like we do for this student. For today's question, we have a student named Genesis who is asking us about their community college transfer process, getting prepared for the MCAT, and successfully getting into medical school. So we're gonna hit the intro, then I'm gonna play Genesis' messages for you, and we're gonna get at it, guys. This is a great video. If you are ready to learn, sit down. Let's go, guys. Alright guys, let's listen to what Genesis had to say and what she's asking us. Hi Dr. Pineset, I'm, my name is Genesis Obando and I am currently going to be a junior in college. But um, my question is, is that, so I tr am transferring from a community college to a university this coming fall, but I have only taken my a biology and a human anatomy class. And I know that you're supposed to take well, um, originally you're supposed to take like your junior year, the MCAT test, but um, I don't know necessarily how to plan it out. And it would be so helpful as to know which direction to take. Like, do, is it necessary to take the um, necessary like prereq classes to take the MCAT or should I just go for it? Um yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Genesis, for your question. I appreciate that. Like I said, if you are a student or pre-med and you want help becoming more successful and learning how to dominate, get to my website, thestudydoc.com, and leave me a voicemail so you can be featured on this study doc show. And so Genesis' question is a good one, right? It's multifaceted. And I think the important thing you guys are going to see, and I hope you guys are seeing when I answer these questions, is that oftentimes we ask one question, but there's a lot of things that we need to think about in terms of getting the right answer and direction based on our inquiry. And so in this case we have, let's summarize, we have a transfer student who's transferred from community college into the university as a junior, yay for making successfully transferring, but this student's a pre-med and they want to go to medical school. And they're concerned because they're hearing that they're supposed to take the MCAT this upcoming year, their first year at university, but they haven't taken all the recommended prerequisites for the MCAT. So her question is, is what do I do? Okay, so <laughs> let's first address the MCAT portion. There's a couple different things here I'm gonna address and then I'm gonna actually lay out a full plan for Genesis be successful through the MCAT and getting medical school. So the very first thing is that we need to understand what the prerequisites for the MCAT are to understand, okay, what are those requirements and do we really need them? And so if you guys don't know, right, the MCAT test, the medical school admissions exam covers a variety of topics. One key thing to note is that the MCAT, when they redid it, you know, four or five years ago, became a much more critical thinking focused exam as opposed to a memorization exam. And so one of the mistakes students make as they prepare for this exam is they focus really, really heavy into content and they really focus on the individual individual subjects and they're not focused on improving their test taking skills and their reading skills, which are really where you're gonna see gains on your MCAT score. If you need help with your MCAT prep, guys, get over to my website. I have an amazing, super affordable MCAT course for you guys to so check that out. But in terms of what the recommended prerequisites are for the MCAT, for this student's inquiry, the recommended MCAT courses, according to the AAMC, the class that you've taken before you take the MCAT, are one year each, introductory biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and then they also want you to take a semester of psychology, sociology, and biochemistry. So these are the recommended prerequisites. The first thing I'll say, guys, is that I agree with these recommendations. And the reason I agree with these recommendations, and I actually recommend you take even more than this is because when we talk about this MCAT guys and we talk about should I take that prerequisites or do I need this class or when should I take it you want to put yourself in the best position possible to do well in the MCAT but then also to get into medical school and holding off on your MCAT until the very last minute is the best way to accomplish this I'll tell you why first if you take more classes so they recommend you take one year biology but the truth is for pre-meds right that one year biology is just general biology on the MCAT the MCAT is 25% biology and so it makes up the largest portion of the MCAT, it's tied with psychology for 25%, which might be a shock to you guys, and we'll talk about that in a second. But for that biology section, that 25%, it goes across all the sections. Introductory bio is not sufficient to cover all the topics you need to know and to cover them at a level where you're able to apply them quickly on the time limited MCAT test. So for that reason, I actually go beyond what the AMC recommends. I recommend that you take that one year of general biology. I also recommend that you take genetics. I also 
recommend that you take cellular and molecular biology if that's not included in your introductory biology class. And I also, they recommend that semester biochemistry. I highly recommend that semester biochemistry. Not necessarily because biochemistry is considered a more advanced course, but because it brings together a lot of the different areas and brings things together so you get to kind of see how things are multimodality and across fields. And that's really important for your MCAT because that's one of the ways they like to trick you is they like to present something that seems complicated, but really it's just two simpler concepts put together in a way you've never seen. And for biochemistry, it's kind of the merging of a lot of different areas and it brings it all together. So in terms of should you take the MCAT prerequisites, you should not guys, because taking those courses and taking more courses like I'm recommending is going to help you in three key ways. One, it's going to improve your study skills, which are very important when you study for the MCAT. Two, it's going to improve your fund of knowledge, meaning the things that you know in your brain that you can pull out and apply on test day. Well, the stronger your fund of knowledge, the less new stuff you were learning as you prepare for the MCAT and the higher level of a student you will be applying those topics on the exam. So it will lead to less frustration while you're studying and a better score on test day. The third thing it does by taking more classes, is it gives you more time to improve your test taking skills. And the MCAT, make no mistake about it, is a test taking test. So they wanna see, can you read a stem and break a stem down and see, okay, what are they really asking me? They wanna see, are you tripped up by, right, answers that are designed to be tricky and to make you feel a false sense of, oh, I know this. Are you able to read through these critically and dissect and break down and eliminate answers and find the correct answer? They're testing you on all these skills. By taking more classes, you can do all that stuff. So for Genesis, for you, what I would advise for you to do, don't rush this MCAT process. Instead, I want you to take your time, take a bunch of classes, take lots of classes, and then take the MCAT when you are ready, when your fund of knowledge is strong, your study skills are strong, and your test taking skills are strong. The other reason I say not to take the MCAT without prerequisites, this is a big one, guys, is for your actual admissions ability when we take the MCAT, most schools will only allow your MCAT to be three years old. And so what happens is if you take the MCAT your junior year, you then go through, right, your senior year, that's one year. If you apply that year, then great. But what if you don't get in? Now the next year is two. What if you don't get in? Now you're at the third year, so you're limiting your chances of getting in. Or what happens if you take your MCAT junior year, then senior year you're not able to apply because something comes up. Maybe you get busy with your senior thesis, whatever. So then you don't apply that year. So now one year's gone by. Now the second year, you're gearing up to apply. You apply for two years. If you don't get in that cycle, you only have one more shot to apply before your MCAT is too old and expires. And I have had students in that situation. They come to me, Dr. Pines, what should I do? My test is expired. I'm like, oh, I feel their pain because it's awful because they have to climb that MCAT hill again. So we only want to do it once. So Genesis, in answer to your question, for everybody, don't take the MCAT without the recommended coursework. In fact, take more coursework to be prepared. And I almost forgot to throw in there the psychology part, right? Because I mentioned that psychology tied to biology to be 25% of the MCAT exam. That means psychology and biology make up 50%. Half of all the questions on the exam are about biology or psychology. So knowing that, guys, and knowing that OCHEM is around 5%, wouldn't it make sense to take more than just one semester of psychology? Wouldn't it make sense to spend a good portion of your time understanding psychology and the terms related to it. I advise you guys to take an entire year of psychology and I advise you guys just to read some general books about psychology and about all these things because all that information is going to help you on your MCAT. It's also going to help you as a person, right? Understanding how we work and why we are so crazy all the time. Understanding psychology will help you with a lot of those things, okay? So that's to address the first question of the prerequisites. The second thing, Genesis, and the, the bigger question is your timeline. You did it. You're one of the few who made it out of community college, stayed on track, got to your University and you're on track to go to medical school, congratulations to all my community college students out there. If you are still in community college and you're putting in the work and you're on track to get out of there, congratulations guys, because the odds are stacked against you. It is not an easy pathway for the statistics because of the way our system is structured. And one of the big pitfalls that happens to us, man, the community college students, I love you guys, right? Is that we get bad advice. And so what I want all of you guys to understand, whether you're a community college student, you're a non traditional student, whatever your pathway is, there are many there are numerous, there are innumerable pathways to medical school. Many of them, right, obviously they're different. Just because they're different doesn't mean they're bad. And we all have our own pathway, the way we get there, and our own timeline, how long it takes us to get to medical school. We have to understand that. We have to embrace that, that we all have our own pathway and our own timeline. Because when we do, that puts us in a position to be successful because then we will make the right choices of what we should be doing. And then also we should make the right choices about when we're doing them and then ultimately when we apply. And in your case, Genesis, why I mentioned about the difficulty for community college students, they get advice that's based on a, a typical pre-med timeline. Timeline. But that's not fair. 
Because if you're a community college student, you've been at two years of community college with limited resources, with less competitive classes, and also you're gonna transfer to a big university, that junior year, right, you said in your question, you said, suppose take the MCAT junior year. That's bad advice because you're just now transitioning as a junior to the university level. You're trying to find out where everything is. You're trying to find your footing, trying to get handle the class load, trying to get in your extracurriculars, all these things. So that year is a very busy year. It's almost like you're a freshman. So then adding MCAT on top of that is a recipe for disaster. So I want all of you guys, particularly you Genesis, to embrace your own pathway, embrace your own timeline, and don't do the suppose it. Suppose it according to who? No, listen to yourself and be real about your personal timeline. And in this case, Genesis, the way I would advise you and for community college students, write this down, take this to note, right? Save this video. This is the pathway and the timeline you should take, okay? Well, can we reset the video? If you guys are enjoying this video right now, I'm Dr. Andrew Pines at The Study Doc, The Study Doc Show. I'm here to help you guys as students. Genesis was nice enough to help you guys learn. Everyone give a thumbs up to this video right now for Genesis. Put in the box right now, say thank you Genesis for sharing your question so we can learn and get better today. But if you are a student and you want to send me a voicemail guys, get to my website, thestudydoc.com, click on leave Dr. Pines a voicemail and I will answer your question in depth like I'm doing right now for Genesis, okay? So the pathway for community college students, here's what you should do. You should in your community college time, take as many courses as you can. It will bump your unit load, it will bump your experience load for study skills, right, for fund of knowledge, for test taking skills, and it will have you maximally prepared for the transition to university. It will also have you maximally flexible for that transition to university because you'll have so many units, you'll be able to pick and choose how you allocate your coursework during those final two years. When you get to the university, don't overwhelm yourself with units. If you are not at the A level, take the time, take the minimum amount of units you can that first semester, get acclimate it, figure out where things are, how things work, and how it's different from the community college. Then I want you to ramp up, take a heavy load the rest of that junior year. That way you're getting and we're building our sound foundation of having all these units behind us, which will allow us in our senior year to focus on our extracurriculars. Before then though, the January of your junior year, I want you to start looking for summer enrichment opportunities. Either something you're passionate about in extracurricular, or what I think is the best option, is to find a summer research program. These are awesome guys, because as a community college student, maybe you didn't have access to research at your community college, but now you're at the university level and it's hard because you're doing so many other things. Summer enrichment programs allow you to apply to a program, do research over the summer, and they have built-in infrastructure that allow you to get a result, a publication, a poster, something quickly, and then also they have a defined timeline. That way when you leave at the end of the summer, it's not awkward. You can go back to focusing on your academics and other extracurriculars to continue to build your resume. So you do that your junior year, at least summer after your junior year, then senior year, you take your classes, but you also now start building in lots of extracurriculars, things you care about, things that will add to your application and make you competitive outside of just the raw numbers. Because now we got our GPA tight, started to build our extracurriculars, get all that right, and then now we finish our senior year, I want you to take the summer and do another enrichment program, do more extracurriculars. Then spend the fall after you graduate, this will be your gap year, right? You use that fall to go hard on the MCAT. That's all you do for four, five, six, even eight months. Go hard, take that MCAT in January or in March of that following year, get your great score, focus on getting your application tight, getting the writing, all structured and together, right? And then you apply that next summer. So you took one gap year, you apply that next summer, you've got everything, all the boxes checked. Academics, check. You've got extracurriculars, check. You've got your MCAT, check. And then you're ready to apply competently so your writing won't be rushed and you'll be focused. And then bam, you're into medical school. That pathway, that timeline includes a gap year and is a little bit longer than a typical pre-med pathway. But let me ask you this, would you give up one year to get accepted? Would you give up one year to get accepted? Of course you would, because you're giving up one year for a lifetime becoming a doctor, guys. Don't rush the process, move with your own timeline. And for community college students, it's important we take that extra time to really enrich all aspects of our application to make sure we are maximally competitive. Okay, Genesis, thank you so much for your question, guys. I'm so excited to be able to help you guys on a weekly basis. If you have a question, guys, I'm here to help you. I'm Dr. Pineset. Whatever your excuses, whatever your obstacles are, I'm here to help you overcome them so you can dominate. If you have a question, put it in the comment box below. Get to my website, thesightdoc.com, leave me a voicemail, and let's go, guys. Let's help you guys get better better today. Today, right here, right now. How do we always end these videos, guys? No excuses, just dominate. If you enjoyed this, guys, take a second, like this video. If you're listening to the podcast, hello, take time, leave a review. And if you are new, subscribe, guys. Subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, find me on social media, at The Study Doc, and let's go, guys. We are here to help you get better, so let's go. Let's put the work in, no excuses, just dominate. I'll see you guys next time.
That's it for another episode of the Study Doc Show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, thestudydoc.com. Grab a free ebook. Sign up for every webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.